good afternoon everyone coming together is a beginning keeping together is a progress working together is success and this is what we experience in luth college of nursing today is a special day for us indeed as we are hosting our 11th series of webinar on youth use heart to beat cardiovascular diseases adolescence is a critical time for prevention of cardiovascular disease the epidemiological cohort confirms that having more ideal cardiovascular health metrics in adolescents and young adults is associated with better cardiac health later in the life heart disease is not a major cause of death among children teenagers and early adulthood sudden risk factors play may Im important role in the person's chance of developing heart disease which can be changed treated or modified prevention is the best way to avoid cardiovascular diseases later in the life in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic use heart to beat cardiovascular disease is alarming us to alarming us that taking care of our heart is more important than ever before we are happy to choose this topic for our webinar as it's a need of the hour when each of us deal with the human being especially in the critical pandemic situation welcoming is a warm greeting sent your way to let you know that you are valued in a special way i call upon mr johnson lk vice principal to accord the words of welcome sir please i am delighted to welcome you all in the webinar series 11 respected chairman dr k j devasya in his absence here managing director dr joseph benavent our most valued speaker of today dr placid sebastian mrs rakit joseph director lod education academy principal professor sandil kumar ji and principals of uh, uh, lod allied health sciences and uh, institute of paramedical sciences delegates my dear colleagues and my dear students good afternoon to all i am delighted and privileged to greet you all with a warm welcome on this auspicious occasion it's my pleasure to extend a hearty welcome to our dear chairman dr kj devasya though he is not present over here uh, welcome dr devasya my hearty welcome goes to our managing director dr joseph benavin who is always a strong inspiration to all of us welcome you sir i offer a grateful welcome to our guest speaker of the day dr placid sebastian a senior consultant interventional cardiologist astrams hospital kanur a warm welcome you sir i am truly delighted to welcome our director Lod Education Academy, Mrs. Rakhi Joseph, who is ever ready to support us. A warm welcome, you, ma'am. Thank you, Johnson. I also wish to extend a cordial welcome to our principal, Professor Sandil Kumar Ji, College of Nursing, Dr. Pramod Marath, Principal, Lod Allied Health Sciences, Mr. Nijaraj, Principal, Institute of Paramedical Sciences. I welcome you all in the webinar series eleven. I take this opportunity to welcome all the faculty of Lod Education Academy to this event. Welcome you all. I offer a rapturous welcome to all the student delegates, College of Nursing, School of Nursing, Allied Health Sciences, and Institute of Paramedical Sciences. Welcome you all, my dear students. Once again, I welcome all of you and wishing you all a fruitful session. Thank you. thank you sir a hearty welcome to you too thank you anju we are highly honored to have a person in his simplest form down to earth and hard work is ultimate a man of vitality every little tur dream turns into a great reality and who fulfills every promise made now with immense pleasure i invite dr joseph benavent Managing Director, Lord Institution, to deliver the inaugural address. Sir, please. Thank you. Can you remove that screen off? Okay. 
Yeah, Professor Central, Principal, College of Nursing, Mrs. Rocky Joseph, Director of Academics, our guest speaker, Dr. Placid Sebastian. I would like to reiterate he's not a guest, he's one among the family. He's my younger brother. It's just that since he's busy with cardiac, focusing purely on cardiac, that he's not involved with the college and other activities. Uh, to Mr. Johnson, Pro, Dr. Pramod, Nijaraj, all the other faculties of Lude Education Academy, dear students of the institution. Today is a great day because not just two reasons. One, because my brother is doing the session, and it's a very relevant. It's a very relevant subject. Use a heart to keep away cardiac ailments. See, one thing we should all realize is at this age, I think majority of the participants here would be in their early youth or uh, in their adult, late adolescence. One thing we don't realize is we don't think about our heart at this age. And that's the saddest part of it all. Because what we do now and how best we take care of our heart now is what decides how our heart is going to be once we cross 40. And I'm sure Dr. Plastid would be telling you about how cardiac diseases are affecting the youth nowadays too. So at this point in time, especially when we are all locked in those with the pandemic, we are all restricted in, 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 in movements, in our physical activities. So that endangers the heart even more because naturally we'll be devoid of, devoid of exercise. And how can you keep your heart healthy? The only way all of us can keep our heart healthy is with regular exercise. When we talk about exercise, it doesn't mean that you got to go to the gym, even a simple walk or jogging. Anything would do, any outdoor activity would do. If not anything, if you are unable to go outdoors, if the fear of Corona is keeping you indoors, you can at least walk within indoors, within your house, the premises of your house, just go up the stairs, the flight of steps that you have. And then that's the way you need to ensure that your heart remains healthy. See, it's not just about, it's not just about diet. It's not just about substance abuse like smoking uh, that, that, that adversely affects the heart. See, it all depends on us. Like I said, exercise. See, I was a person who used to work out regularly, but with, with the corona coming in, I found a new passion now. I've taken to cycling. And yesterday, I've just cycled 40 kilometers in two hours. So if, if an old man like me can do it, I think the children, all your students should be very active. Use your heart as much as you can. See, the thing is, if you use your heart at this age, the more you use, the better it is. Probably at our age, if we use our heart uh, indiscriminately, we might, we might fall flat on the road because every time I take the cycle and go out, my wife would be telling me that friend of ours, our friend, he fell dead on the road cycling. Huh? So there's a constant threat as far as we are concerned when we exert ourselves beyond a particular limit. But at this age, you take care of your heart. See, you're doing what you're doing now. Is it like it's like investing in the bank? You know, with interest, you get it after you cross 40, 50, 60, 70, and now with life expect expectancies going up, probably all of you, the younger generation, you might live up, live to be 80s and 90s, and you've got to be very healthy at that age. You shouldn't be bog bogged down by ailments. You shouldn't be visiting hospitals. You shouldn't be consuming drugs. So I don't want to go into all that. The benefits of user heart, using your heart to avoid cardiovascular disease, et cetera, will be explained well by one of the best speakers that we have on the subject. Uh, Dr. Placid Sebastian, who is uh, the key interventional cardiologist at Astor Mims. And he is also a fitness freak. Obviously, he's got to be because he's dealing with a lot of cardiac patients every, every day doing angioplasties. And, you know, it's always a warning for him because he sees them on a day-to-day -day basis. At least we don't see. And we got to be motivated otherwise. So, dear students, at this point in time, what is very important is if, you, if you've not been doing anything, anything physical for the past how many months from March onwards, that is for the past eight months, start doing today itself in a small way. Girls can do skipping. It's one of the best exercises. Do skipping and just post it on your 
on your what is it uh, in the groups of your college groups on how many skippings you can do how many skips you can do in one uh, in one in one minute that's the key and if you're very good you can do up to 100 so let's see if anybody takes up the challenge and probably when the when the college open the college open we'll have a we'll have a competition for skipping uh, and let's see who's going to be the winner and i'll sponsor the prize for that but as long as you all remain healthy do good be safe not just staying away from corona but be safe ensuring that your heart is safe when you reach old age when you reach your middle age when you cause 80 that's what's important and that's why specifically the college has chosen this subject today because we all felt that students were glued uh, with all your online classes you are glued to your mobiles or your ipads or your laptops so it's very important that we need to take move outdoors and we need to really be active i don't want to consume much of your time because you've got a very good speaker and we need to give him maximum time possible so it's my proud privilege to declare this session inaugurated thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much for your inspirational message Youth heart is about to live a heart healthy life and to act on that knowledge changing our behavior for a better quality of life now and in the future. As a healthcare professional, we have to help our patients and each other to make positive changes for their heart health. We have such an eminent personality in the field of cardiac medicine today here with us. With immense pleasure and delight, let me introduce our guest speaker for the day, Dr. Placid Sebastian, working as a senior in Consultant Interventional Cardiologist at Astrum in Skarnur and Lourdes Hospital, Kaliparamba. Dr. Placid Sebastian is son of Dr. De Devasya, our chairman, married to Dr. Sneha Sebastian, Consultant Radiologist, Lourdes Hospital, blessed with two boys, Mr. Brian Sebastian, who is doing MBBS, and Master Joshua Matthew Sebastian, studying in 12th standard. Dr. Placid Sebastian is graduated from Kasturba Medical College, Karnataka in the year 1987 and completed MD in internal medicine from the same college in 1997. He successfully completed BM cardiology in the year 2004 from Christian Medical College, Velur, Tamil Nadu, which is one of the premier medical college in India. He has numerous vast experience in the area of cardiology in various institutions across South India, like St. John's Medical College, Bangalore, Christian Medical College, Bellu, visiting interventional cardiologists at KMCH Hospital, Coimbatore, consultant cardiologists at Christian Fellowship Hospital, Dindigal, Tamil Nadu. Also, he has served as a professor come interventional cardiologist at Saharna Hradayalaya Pariyaram Medical College, from 2007 to 2019. Presently, he is working as a senior consultant interventional cardiologist at Astromims Karnur and also our Lourdes Hospital, Kaliparamba. He has three international presentations and numerous national presentations and clinical trials. He has performed around 1,000 coronary angiogram and 350 PCIs every year. He is also expert in pacemaker implantation, AICDS and CRT, ASD and PDA device closure, balloon, mitral, wall, mitral and pulmonary, pulmonary valvuloplasty, and he is also a fellow in American College of Cardiology, USA, Society of Coronary Angiography and Intervention, USA, and European Society of Cardiology. Above all, he is a member of our Lud family, and we are very happy to welcome our doctor, Dr. Placid Sebastian, to take up the session. Sir, you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, I'll straight away go into our session. Uh, that is the lifestyle diseases. I think Dr. Joseph Benavan already spoke to you about the heart problems in young age, unless you look after your heart now, in, by 50 or 60, you may be down with various diseases. So today's topic is heart disease and youth. 
And this year, 2020, the theme of World Heart Day was use heart to beat cardiovascular disease. So, okay. So heart disease and youth are broadly classified into four categories. First, congenital heart diseases. Second, rheumatic heart disease. Third, myocardial diseases. And fourth one is the lifestyle heart diseases, which leads to coronary artery disease. So we know various types of uh, congenital heart disease like ASD, VSD, tetralogy of phthalate. Then comes rheumatic heart diseases like uh, uh, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, aortic stenosis. Myocardial diseases like dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Congenital heart disease, uh, the number as well as the rheumatic heart disease numbers have come down drastically in the last couple of uh, you know, decades because of uh, you know, improvement in the uh, medical treatment of rheumatic fever and uh, improvement in the social hygiene and better standard of living. So the rheumatic heart disease as such, when we were students in medical college, the number of rheumatic heart disease was pretty very high. I think that was the major chunk of heart diseases when we were here. And congenital heart disease was there always. And now most of the congenital uh, heart diseases can be treated easily and cured. Now what we see, the rheumatic heart disease has slowly disappeared from the uh, med medical or cardiology ward and slowly lifestyle diseases are coming up. So there is a significant increase in lifestyle heart diseases, which leads to coronary artery disease. So what are these lifestyle diseases? It includes hypertension, diabetes, atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, high cholesterol, uh, obesity. So lifestyle disease, they are called because a person's habits, behaviors, and practices largely determine whether a person develop a lifestyle disease. So what you practice now as uh, youngsters, like you know your food habits, your smoking habits, your anxiety, tension, lack of physical activity, this will determine how you develop a heart disease probably after 20 years. So this is the right time, and this is, a, I think, the right topic uh, to talk to you, uh, how you should look after your heart and yourself. So here is a doctor. Look at this doctor. In IMA study has found that Doctors die much early when compared to other population. The average life expectancy of a Malayali is around 72 years, but the average life expectancy of a doctor is only 52 or 59 years. See, most of the time, healthcare workers, including doctors and nurses, paramedicals, see, we don't look after your, ourselves. We, look, uh, we spend most of the time, valuable, uh, precious time for looking after the patients. So very little... We look after ourselves, our diet, will uh, high rich diet, lack of exercise. We don't look after ourselves. So, and we will have a lot of tension, anxiety while managing the patient. So all this will uh, add together. And by you know mid forties and fifties, most of the uh, paramedics are having cardiac illness. So this topic is particularly relevant to prevent heart diseases in paramedics and uh, uh, healthcare workers. This is what uh, Dalai Lama told about the human nature, humanity. He said, man sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then he sacrifices all the money he has earned to recuperate his health. So this is what we do. Like till 50 years, we do hard work. We make a lot of money. And the rest of the years in, your, in, our, in our life, we spend that for our health. You know, once you're down with heart diseases, you have to spend from your pocket. Okay, so what are this, uh, what is atherosclerotic coronary artery disease? We all know that heart is the most hardworking muscle of our body. It pumps around four to five liters of blood every minute during rest. Even whether you are doing some work or you're sleeping, heart is continuously at work. And it supplies nutrients and oxygen-rich blood to all the body parts, including itself. And coronary arteries are the arteries which surround the heart, keep it nourished with uh, blood. 
So in the human body, we have two coronaries, right coronary and left coronary. Left coronary is divided into left anterior descending and left circumflex artery. So these coronary arteries are extremely important for the well-being of the heart because coronary artery is the one which supplies oxygen and nutrients to the heart. So how big is the problem of this coronary artery disease? Coronary artery disease is the number one killer disease worldwide. 17 million deaths annually. Every year, 17 million people die because of coronary artery disease. During the last 30 years, large decline in the developed countries, but there is a significant rise uh, in the developing countries. In the developed nation, because of the rising health awareness and government programs and increased physical activity, they could bring down the incidence and prevalence of coronary artery disease significantly low. And, but at the same time, in the developing countries, because of a change of lifestyle, the coronary artery incidence is going up significantly. So why should an Indian be worried about coronary artery disease? Indians are more susceptible than any other ethnic group for developing coronary artery disease. Indians are 3.4 times more than an Americans, and Indians get coronary artery disease six times more than a Chinese and 20 times more than a Japanese. So see how vulnerable uh, we are to get a coronary artery disease. And in Indians, the coronary artery disease occurs at a lower cholesterol. This is most of the time, the patients, when they come to our OPD and they check their cholesterol value and they say that my cholesterol is low, still I have got a heart disease. This is the reason because in Indians, the coronary artery disease happens at a very low cholesterol level. And the Indians get the disease at much younger age, probably five to 10 years earlier than the other com countries and communities. And in India, Indians, the disease follow more severe and malignant cause, a three times higher rate of second heart attack and two times higher mortality than other whites, other, other than whites. So in Indians are susceptible for coronary artery disease when compared to other ethnic group. And when you get coronary artery disease, the severity of the disease and the mortality is much higher among Indians. So we should be really worried about this particular disease and we should take all measures to prevent this coronary artery disease. So we should always think that why should I be worried about this particular coronary artery disease? This is because we are genetically predisposed to have coronary artery disease because our ethnic genetics is predisposed to have coronary artery disease and poor handling of fat, uh, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, all this will lead us to get coronary artery disease. And environmental insults like urbanization, sudden change in life, all can lead to increased incidence of coronary artery disease among Indians. Okay, so what are the risk factors? What increases the risk of having coronary artery disease? The risk factors of coronary artery disease broadly classified into two categories. One is unmodifiable risk factors. That is the factors which you can't help. And the other side, it is modified risk factors. That is factors which you can change. So unmodified risk factors, factors which you cannot change is one is your age. You cannot change your age. So any men above the age, uh, age of 45 years, women above 55 years are susceptible for coronary artery disease. So you have to be extremely careful once you cross men, once you cross 45 years, women we cross 55 years. Sex, uh, women are usually protected from coronary artery disease till, till their menstruating period uh, time. Once they attain menarche uh, and men, men, once they attain their menopause, the incidence of coronary artery disease found to be increased in uh, ladies. So ladies also should be extremely careful after the age of 55 years. And the race, I already mentioned that Indians are vulnerable for coronary artery disease. And a strong family history of coronary artery disease that if your parents like father, mother, brother, or anyone having coronary artery disease in the family, you are having high chance of having a coronary artery disease. So you have to be extremely careful. So what are the factors which we can make a change or you can modify. So that includes high cholesterol, smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, alcohol, and physical inactivity. So we will go by one by one. So these risk factors, they multiplicate you. So if you have a little bit of cholesterol, you have a little bit of sugar, you have a little bit of 
hypertension, these all factors may coexist uh, exist in same pa patient because it occurs in clusters. So patients who are diabetic will have high chance of having hypertension. They will be having high chance of having obesity. They will have high chance of having cholesterol. So risk factors occurs in clusters. And the majority of events arise in individuals with modest elevation of many risk factors than from marked elevation of a single risk factor. So it is very important that you should give attention to mild elevation of blood sugar, mild elevation of blood pressure, or mild elevation of cholesterol. Because small elevation of many factors adds together and the chance of having coronary artery disease increases much higher than a person having a single risk factor. So first we'll discuss about cholesterol. I think you must have heard a lot of rumors about cholesterol that uh, some people say cholesterol is bad, some people say cholesterol is good. So the actual fact is everybody need cholesterol in their body because it uh, serves a vital function in the body because it's it, uh, the, the outer layer of, of the neurons is mainly by cholesterol. So cholesterol definitely is required in our body, but extra cholesterol, that whatever cholesterol you consume more than what we require, too much cholesterol can deposit in the arteries in the form of plaque and block the arteries and cause various heart diseases. And you may not have symptoms till you get a heart attack. So this is probably a very silent process and this is a silent killer. So initially you will not feel that cholesterols are deposited in your coronary artery, arteries, but subsequently when you develop a heart attack, you know that a lot of cholesterol has been already deposited in your cor coronary arteries. So uh, we always think that, you know, as youngsters, as children, we don't have to worry much about cholesterol and you can eat whatever you want. This, this picture definitely shows what the real truth and fact is. See, from the first decade, that is when you are 10 years of age, small amount layers of you know, cholesterol rich cells are deposited along the intimate layer of the, uh, uh, the coronary arteries. So these are called the foam cells. You can see that small layers of cholesterol is deposited. As your cholesterol consumption increases, they form a fatty streak. You can see the cholesterol deposit gradually increasing in size and depth over a period of time. And by fourth decade, the, you have a full blown uh, atheromatous plaque or fibrous plaque, and sometimes this plaque can rupture and produce a heart attack. So the this process starts from very young age. It doesn't happen after 40 years. So children, I mean, kid, uh, students age, age between 18 to 22, you have to be extremely careful about what you eat because the small amount of cholesterol deposit now in your coronary arteries can cause problems in your future life. So this is, uh, look at this coronary artery of a, a patient. See this, how ugly it looks, you know, when you open up your coronary artery and look in, inside that. So you may uh, think that, you know, it looks very clean and neat, but no, this is how a coronary artery of a person who had high cholesterol and hypertension diabetes really looks like. Then you can see that this kind of a coronary artery can get blocked at any time and cause heart attack. So it's not only the coronaries which we are worried about, because in coronary arteries, if the cholesterols are deposited and causes an obstruction, it can produce angina, heart attack, MI, or sudden cardiac death. It can also get deposited in the blood vessels of our uh, lower limb arteries and causes peripheral vascular disease. It can get deposited in the cerebral circulation and produce ischemic stroke. So it causes problems. It can cause problems everywhere. But you know, if you have problems with the uh, blood circulation to brain and heart, it produce, was processed, causes more damage than any other organs in our body. So that's why the importance. Okay, so where does this cholesterol come from? 65% of the cholesterol is actually, uh, it is produced in our liver and gets circulated in our body. That is why Sometimes you see people who take, uh, you know, they take vegetarian, vegetarian, mainly vegetarian diet, very lean body weight, still they have very high cholesterol. That is because intrinsically they have preponderance to produce large amount of cholesterol uh, from their liver. And this, uh, this high uh, cholesterol that has been produced from the liver gets circulated into the blood circulation and they get deposited in coronary arteries and various other places. And only 35% of uh, cholesterol come from our diet. 
So when you look at this, we, we don't have control over this 65% that is produced from our liver because we cannot tell our liver to stop producing cholesterol. The only thing what we can do is we can tell ourselves that we shouldn't consume extra amount of cholesterol which our body cannot handle. So somebody who has very high cholesterol level right from young age, they should limit their cholesterol intake uh, so that large amount of cholesterol is being produced from their liver. That is why. So this is uh, just a broader guideline on the management of cholesterol. Like we have primary prevention of uh, uh, cholesterol, prevention of high cholesterol and secondary prevention. Secondary prevention is mainly directed to patients who already have a clinical coronary artery disease. This is atherosclerotic coronary cardiovascular disease or patients with uh, primary hypercholesteremia or patients with diabetes. So, so these patients, they should be extremely careful that such patients should have high levels of lipid lowering drugs. They should take high levels of lipid lowering drugs from very young age. In patients with clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, reduce, reduce low density lipoprotein cholesterol, that is LDL cholesterol with high intensity statin therapy or maximally, maximally tolerated statin therapy. So most of the time when we tell our patient that they may be young at age of 40, they may say, you know, I'm very young. I cannot take medicines for a long period of time. But, you know, you have to take medicines unless you don't, uh, you take medicines. You, you know, you will end up in having a heart attack at the age of 42. And, you know, instead of having one tablet, you maybe end up taking 10 tablets. That's why you, if your cholesterol level is very high, you should take medicines. And especially people with already having coronary artery disease, they are having, they have high risk for having another heart attack or heart disease. So they should be extremely careful and they also take high dose of statin. And the more LDL cholesterol is reduced on statin therapy, the greater will be the subsequent risk reduction. So you need to bring down your cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. Usually we try to keep it less than 100, but in patients already having a coronary artery disease, we have to bring it down less than 70 and use a maximally tolerated statin to lower your LDL cholesterol level by more than 50%. So suppose if you have a LDL cholesterol 150, you try to bring it down less than 75. So that's how you know you have to aggressively treat uh, cholesterol in patients who are already having coronary artery disease. And uh, for primary prevention, so like, you know, like uh, youngsters who are, uh, never had any uh, cardiac events in the past, you should calculate the risk of having atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. There are a lot of uh, calculators available in the internet. We can take any of this uh, American uh, heart uh, or dot org, or we can take cardiosource.org. Any of the site, if you go, you can get the predict 10 year prediction of your cardiovascular event. So if you can add these data like your gender, age, and you know, they'll calculate and tell you what is the percentage of chance you are having a heart disease in next 10 years. So it is, I think, advisable for all of you to go to these sites and calculate your risk for having a heart disease in 10 years time. So once you do that, and suppose you find that uh, your risk factor is very high, that is if your chance is more than 20%, and if you find that your cholesterol level is high, then you should be on medicines. But if your risk factor is a low, and the chance of having coronary heart disease is less than, so you don't have to start medicines, but you have to follow a very strict lifestyle uh, modification. Okay, so there were a lot of controversy regarding the diet uh, because you must have seen this slide before, uh, dietary guidelines by American in uh, 2015, 2020, which they, some many people say that, uh, you know, they promote taking cholesterol, but that is not the real truth. The real truth, in, as Mark Twain already mentioned, a myth can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. So the myths will travel very fast. So the actual, what the guidelines say is, that uh, you can focus on number three, that is limit calorie from added sugars, saturated fat, and reduce sodium intake. Consume uh, an eating pattern, low in added sugars and saturated fat and sodium. So this is what clearly this guideline say that you have to limit your sugar intake. You should 
limit your saturated fat intake and you should limit your sodium intake. So uh, guidelines say that uh, follow a healthy eating pattern across your lifespan, focus on variety, nutrient uh, density and amount of food what you're taking and uh, shift to healthier food and beverage choices, support healthy eating pattern for all. This is what the dietary guidelines say about the uh, diet. So it has been established beyond a reasonable doubt that lower lowering definitely elevated blood cholesterol levels, particularly that's of the LDL cholesterol will reduce the risk of heart attack uh, and by coronary artery disease. So it, there are many trials, many studies which have shown proved before, beyond doubt that high levels of LDL can cause coronary artery disease and bringing down the LDL cholesterol will definitely benefit and it will reduce the risk of having a heart attack from coronary artery disease. So you should limit your cholesterol intake. Next, we'll move on to diabetes, another risk factor for having coronary artery disease. I'm sure you all know much about a lot of, uh, of things about diabetes, but I'll just focus only on diabetes and coronary artery Okay, so diabetes as a disease at any given cholesterol level, diabetes person have two to three times higher chance of having a heart attack or stroke. So all diabetes should be extremely careful. Uh, what I am telling you this, I'm sure that none of you are diabetic, but you may have people at home, you know, your parents, your relatives who are diabetic. So they have to be extremely careful that for them having a heart disease is almost two to three times higher chance of having a heart attack than a non-diabetic patient. And a diabetic is more likely to die of heart disease than a non-diabetic. And 80% of the diabetics die from heart disease. The risk of sudden death from heart attack from diabetes is the same as that of someone who already had a heart attacks. So diabetes people, diabetic patients should be extremely careful to control, first of all, their diabetes, Second, they should also look for other risk factors, whether they have high cholesterol. If they have high cholesterol, they have to bring down their cholesterol level to normal. If they have hypertension, they should bring down their hypertension to normal level. So this is what uh, we should worry about because incidence and prevalence of uh, the diabetes uh, in India is much higher when compared to any other you know, country, like in, uh, in, among the Americans and Africans and Europeans we have a very high incidence of uh, diabetes and uh, diabetes people are prone for coronary artery disease. So it's all connected. I do have some problem in moving the slide. Okay. So India harbors the largest number of diabetes. So they say that India is a mecca of diabetes. And why Indians do get uh, diabetes? Because of uh, this is this other studies showed that you know the reasons why Indians get uh, diabetes at much younger age it is low birth weight, abdominal obesity, physical inactivity, diet rich in carbohydrate, and genetic predisposition. So these are the reasons why uh, you know Indians get diabetes, and the incidence of diabetes much higher. Okay. Next, move, we'll move to hypertension. So you all know that hypertension is also a risk factor. Again, if you look at the uh, prevalence of hypertension in uh, all the cities in India, Trivandrum has the highest number of uh, prevalence of hypertension. So like if you look at uh, as a Malayali, you have high prevalence of diabetes, you have high prevalence of hypertension, you have high chance of trunkal obesity. So we are all prone for a coronary artery disease. So this is why we should be extremely careful. So we know that what is a normal blood pressure, systolic blood pressure should be less than 130-80. And once your blood pressure crosses 140-90, you are considered as a hypertensive. And you need to control your blood pressure and try to bring it less, try to bring it down less than 140-90. Okay. 
So, you know, most of the patients, you know, when they come to our OPD, they say you are diabetic. When we tell them that you are a hypertensive, then they are very reluctant to taking uh, you know, medications. But there are many other ways you can bring down your high blood pressure. Like if you reduce your uh, body weight by one kilogram, you can bring down your blood pressure by five millimeter of mercury. And if you follow a very healthy diet, that is uh, diet less in, uh, uh, less in salt and more rich in fruits and vegetables, you can bring down your blood pressure by 11 millimeter of mercury. And if you reduce your dietary intake of sodium, you can bring down your blood pressure by five. And if you enhance uh, salt intake, you can bring down your blood pressure by five. And if you have a physical activity, if you do aerobics and dynamic exercise, you can bring down significantly your blood pressure. And if you, uh, this last part, I don't want to tell you because alcohol also brings down the blood pressure, but I don't want you to follow that. So uh, without taking any medicines, probably by doing uh, regular exercise, aerobics, and by you know cutting down diet, uh, bringing uh, re regularizing your dietary habits, bringing down your salt intake, you can bring down your blood pressure by 20 millimeters. So suppose if your blood pressure is 160 uh, systolic, and if you follow all this, you can bring down your blood pressure to normal and you don't have to take medicines. But unfortunately, most of the patients and most of the people, you know, they don't take, they don't do any of these things and they don't want to take medicines. That is not correct. And if you take an AC inhibitor or ARB, the amount of blood pressure you can bring down is probably 10 to 20, to 10 to 15 millimeter of mercury. And by following a healthy lifestyle, uh, you know, you can probably bring down your blood pressure more than 20 millimeter of mercury. So it is always benefit beneficial to follow a healthy lifestyle rather than taking medicine, but you have to do that because you should be determined enough to bring down your blood pressure by doing regular exercise and diet. And obesity, I think the number of, obese, I think what I read recently and in the uh, city population, if you take the 60% the of the population are obese. So the obesity is increasing significantly in the urban uh, area when compared to the rural India. So what do you call is a uh, obesity? When do you call a person obesity? You first have to calculate uh, body mass index. You know that body mass index is calculated by weight in kg divided by height in meter square. So if your body mass index is between 20 to 25, you are, have a normal BMI. You are considered overweight if your BMI is between 25 to 30 and you are considered obese if your BMI is more than 30. And you can easily calculate your ideal weight by your height minus 100. Suppose your height is uh, 160, you minus 100 and your ideal weight should be around 60 kilograms. So you should always try to maintain your weight at the ideal uh, weight so that you, know, you will not get uh, inc high incidence of coronary artery disease. Or usually try, you try to reduce your waist for uh, less than 90, uh, try to uh, reduce your waist less than 90. So you, in men, if your waist is more than 90, you consider as obese. And in female, if it is more than 80, you consider obese. So, and uh, people who are overweight, uh, 10 to 30 percent more than their normal weight are considered are obese and obese people have two to six times higher risk of developing heart disease and there are two types of obesity one is uh, apple shaped tummy like you know most of the western people have apple shaped they are broad tummies broad shoulders and broad tummies but we Indians have a pear shaped tummy like we have uh, narrow shoulders with uh, big tummies so pear shaped uh, tummies people are likely to have coronary artery disease more. So, uh, I mean, don't try to get into the apple shaped uh, tummy, but try to reduce your tummy. That is the crux of the issue. Okay. So next is smoking. I'm sure the incidence of smoking has come down significantly in, among Malayalis and even among students. Uh, so smoking, we should quit because this is one of the easiest things to do in our life. Quit smoking. And you know that uh, cigarette smoking can increase blood pressure. It increase, decreases the HDL. HDL is a good cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, and it damages our coronary arteries and blood vessels and blood cells and increases heart disease. Cigarette smoke contains about more than 4,000 chemicals. And out of that, 200 of them are really poisonous. So you should be really careful that, you know, you are smoking, 
in around 200 of these poisonous chemicals every time you take a puff. And second, uh, last is alcohol consumption. A small amount of drink, that is one to two. This is not for students. This is for people, adults who take regularly alcohol. One to two drinks are not dangerous for heart. And in a large amount, it adds fat and calories and raises blood pressure. Four drinks per day, you can end up with gastroenterologists instead of cardiologists. And cardiologists do not promote gastroenterologist practice. So please don't take alcohol. You know, many patients come to us saying that, uh, doctor, I have never taken alcohol or consumed alcohol in my life, but I have read from various sources that you know, alcohol really helps in bringing down heart disease. So I said, you have so many other good things to do. Why you want to do take alcohol? You can do exercise, you can do jogging, you can bring down your cholesterol. Why you are focusing only on alcohol? So that is my answer. So don't think, uh, or you can tell your parents also, if somebody is taking alcohol, tell them alcohol is not good for health. So next is stress. Now we all have stress, like and especially people, in healthcare work, we have, I think, the highest stress level because, you know, patient management, patient death, the reaction of the patient's relatives, all can put on a lot of, you know, and our senior, juniors, problems, all can produce, put you into a lot of stress. So what is a stress? Stress is the non-specific response to our body to any demand made up upon it. So may affect a person physically, mentally, or emotionally. So it is very important that we should all learn how to manage uh, stress. And next, I'll move on how to prevent heart disease. So we have we have already seen how a heart disease is produced, what are the risk factors of heart disease. So what you should do to prevent heart disease. The number one rule is look before you eat. Eat a variety of fruits, vegetables every day. Five servings, that's what they say, like, you know, if we force our children, they at the best probably eat you know, one meal and probably one serving of a vegetable or a fruit. But what the recommendation is, every time you eat, you should include in your diet a lot of vegetables and fruits. And eat a variety of grain products, especially we, we usually take polished rice, which is not very good. Unpolished rice is actually good. And choose non-fat or low-fat products Use less fat meats like chicken and fish, uh, uh, meats like uh, uh, beef, mutton, pork. They have uh, high fat uh, meats, so better to avoid that and switch to fat free milk. So, what they say is we each day dig our own grave with our own teeth. So, when you look before you eat. So, next is about the cooking oil. Uh, I'm sure that none of you do cook at home, but uh, you know, we can tell your parents, your mother that, you know, saturated fats, uh, oils with high saturated fat increases cholesterol. So what are these uh, oils? Include coconut oil, palm oil, vanaspadi ki. And monounsaturated fat, uh, that is heart healthy, that is olive oil, groundnut oil, and mustard oil. And polyunsaturated fats are also heart healthy. They are sunflower oil, and soya bean oil. So omega-3 fatty acid, uh, that is a fish oil, is also heart healthy. So the most important is like somebody who is taking coconut oil all this year, you can still take coconut oil, but you have to reduce the amount of the coconut oil what you take. And deep cooking and repeated cooking can produce you know, unsaturated fat to saturated fat. So even if you take a sunflower oil and if you cook it very deep, or if you uh, repeat, cook it repeatedly, it will become a saturated fat. So there is actually no difference between the oil. It is basically how you handle a oil that is what is more important. And this is just a chart which is showing the amount of uh, saturated fat. If you look at uh, coconut oil, it has about 91% of saturated fat. And uh, Benefit of reducing the cholesterol. If you reduce 10% of reduction in the blood cholesterol, reduce 20 to 30% decline in coronary heart deaths. So if you reduce 10% of your cholesterol from your uh, blood circulation, you can bring down the chance of having a heart disease and death by 20 to 30%, so rewarding. And all adults more than 20 years must should get their cholesterol tested. And if it is normal, you should repeat that after five years, if elevated, you should work towards normalizing the levels with lifestyle medications 
modifications and drugs if required. So I'm not telling you that you, if you find that your cholesterol is elevated, you should take medication straight, straight away, but you should start work towards the modification of your lifestyle. Okay, next is, sorry, I just skipped that. Yeah, next rule is exercise. Prevent, to prevent heart disease, next thing what you have to do is exercise. Maintain a level of physical activity that keeps you fit and matches the calories you eat. So basically what they suggest is if you're taking around 2000 calories of uh, you know diet, you should try to do an exercise to try to burn that. So no additional calories is deposited in your body. And severe, as it serves several function in preventing and treating the uh, high risk of having a heart disease and other diseases also. It reduces incidence of obesity, it increases the HDL level and it lo lowers the LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol, help to control diabetes and hypertension. So the, it rewards you know, in many aspects if you try to uh, do regular exercise. So regular exercise, can be just, you know, you don't have to be you go to gym every time to uh, bring, uh, do exercise, uh, you know, brisk walking, skipping, everything can be an exercise. You know, you don't have to have a very complex and complicated exercise programs. Someone who is inactive has a greater risk of having heart disease as someone who has who smoke as high as somebody who has high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So not doing exercise is a risk factor for coronary artery disease. So, you may be thinking that I don't have hypertension, I don't have diabetes, I don't have cholesterol, so I will not get heart disease. You are wrong. If you are not doing regular exercise, you have chance of having high chance. You are having high chance of having uh, coronary artery disease, and it is almost equal of having a, a diabetes or hypertension. So, not doing exercise is also a risk factor for coronary artery disease. Exercise significantly reduces the chance of diabetes and stroke. With the regular exercise, blood pressure, you can bring down your blood pressure by 20 millimeter of mercury. So sitting through life increases the risk of having coronary artery disease, and it's also increased the overweight, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and it increases type two diabetes and heart disease. So what is the current recommended exercise for youngsters? This is called HIT, high intensity interval training. So it is a repeated bouts of high intensity activity completed at a intensity that's generated, which produces around 90% of oxygen consumption. So exercise bouts are separated by brief periods of low intensive exercise work that allow a partial, but often not a full recovery. And the purpose of HIT is to repeatedly stress the body to a greater and extent that that what is actually required during the activity. So HIIT is not uh, somebody who is uh, walking regularly five kilometers. You know, your body get used to that kind of an exercise uh, after a couple of months. So the amount of calorie you can burn, the benefit you get uh, to your heart also comes down over a period of time. So that is why this new terminology, which is called the high intensity intermittent interval training, which says that Sometimes, you know, this is how it is like this, I'll tell you. See, you do three minutes of warm up, then one minute sprint. You know, it is probably boring if you are difficult to sprint all the time. So you sprint for one minute, sudden spurt of exercise, then you warm up, uh, rest for two minutes, then again you sprint for one minute. So this is high intensity intermittent training. That is what uh, it is now recommended. And if you can do this uh, training for 12 minutes, it's more than enough for your cardiovascular system. And the third role is stop smoking now. The risk of heart disease starts uh, decreasing within 24 hours of quitting the smoking and within one year of your, the chance of having, having a coronary artery disease is almost equal to that of a non-smoker by two years. So that is also very rewarding. Like just because that you have smoked in the past doesn't mean that you should get your coronary artery disease in the future. So if you quit, you are smoking for more than two years, you know, your incidence comes down to almost zero. So it is also very record, rewarding. So if somebody is smoking in this group, should quit smoking right now. And they, you know, we have already told some of the, you know, factors which improves the cardiovascular disease like quitting smoking. So it is not only it helps the heart disease alone. See, like suppose if you quit smoking tobacco, 
it helps in cardiovascular uh, diseases and it also prevents developing cancer it helps uh, respiratory diseases preventing respiratory disease and also improves our oral health similarly if you do good diet it improves your cardiovascular uh, health it uh, prevents cancer it um, you know, bring down your incidence of having a diabetes and chances of having osteoporosis and uh, you know other uh, oral health so similarly physical activity so most of the benefits also you know manifold you know when you stop or when you do some particular physical activity the benefits you are getting not only to the heart but other systems and it also prevents other disease also so how do you manage uh, stress good physical activity do regular exercise that itself is a big stress burst buster so you can bring down your level of stress by doing good physical activity sit down and eat a healthy meal with your family friends or even if you are alone relax and eat don't be in a hurry listen to music and try to always smile try to always to vent that is you know try to exhale breathe out you know take deep breath and breathe out and schedule time for yourself for relaxation don't have a very uh, you know type a kind of personality try to run rush everywhere try to be there at the spot all the time you know try take some time for yourself relax a bit listen to music so this is uh, just a nutshell about what i have told so you know prevention of cardiovascular disease you have to bring down cholesterol to stop smoking you have to have a you have to practice a very healthy diet and you should restrict or uh, control diabetes uh, aspirin use is not recommended right now and do good physical activity try to bring down your blood pressure and this is what uh, czechoslovakian uh, you know proverb say that misfortune always come in the door by a door that has been left open for them so if you have all those factors your chance of having uh, coronary artery disease is very high so if you don't have any of those factor your chance of having cardiovascular disease is very less so don't open the doors for all this you know diseases to enter into your heart so try to prevent all this and prepare probably you are walking on the edge of a cliff so you know you never know that sometimes you may be having hard cholesterol in you know, high levels of cholesterol in your body you may be a diabetic you have a i mean maybe hypertension so you may be hypertensive so you have to check all this periodically you like you know if you are crossing 20 years you do a basic biochemical work up check your sugar check your cholesterol then you know if you are normal then you can check it after 5 years and but if you have high levels you have to work to bring down the levels to normal either by change in your lifestyle or by medication so heart disease is often avoidable and following a heart healthy lifestyle doesn't have to be a complicated and it doesn't mean that you need to live a life of self deprivation so you should enjoy you know a heart healthy life you should always tell oh i am so restricted i cannot eat that i cannot eat this see it's all like you know you what you you will start enjoying what you practice so if you start drinking coffee without sugar after a long period if you get used to that and if you put sugar in your coffee you won't like it so it's as simple as that so you once you practice something and you will be able to follow it up but uh, if you don't do that you will be you know you are following the same thing lifelong you will not have any change and you will have heart disease instead find a way to incorporate heart healthy habits into your life and you may well enjoy a healthier heart friendly life in years to come so every morning our brain tell us to do exercise but what happens and our body laughs at it that idea thank you i think that's the last slide and if you have any doubts or questions uh, i'm happy to answer that thank you sir we are extremely grateful to you sir for the fantastic session i hope the participants also found it significant and interesting now the session is opened up for question and answers i do encourage all the faculty and the students of lowd education academy to come forward and clarify your doubts anju i'd like to take this opportunity very quickly uh, to thank uh, dr placid uh, dr placid i do have a thanking note coming up later on but i 
cannot stop myself from saying this. It was such an informative session. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for going into each and every detail um, of what we should and should not do. Uh, for me, it is a little too late, but I'm still going to do it. But for our students here, guys, this is an opportunity. If we are guilty of any of what Dr. Black has said, let us all start acting now because we are all at risk, like we've seen from what Dr. Blass has said, and there is a remedy too, you know? So let's take the opportunity and let's change our lifestyle. And from my own personal experience, if we go into a certain lifestyle way too long, it is actually very difficult to come out of it. So while you're still young and while it's still possible for you to make that change, let us do it. I'm sure all of you would do it. And Dr. Blass said one more time, Thank you very, very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Raki. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I will do it. I can see that smile on your face. I will do it. <laughs> today, <laughs> today say, is the day. <laughs> today is the day, yes. They say within 21 days, we can change um, a certain habit. And I think I'm going to do that for the next 21 days. And if I do it, I'm sure it could be a motivation for our students as well, you know? Exactly. If an old person like me can do it, they can certainly do it. Yes, yes. Okay, let's start with questions, please. I'm sure yeah. we are brimming with questions. Professor Sensil, yeah. I'm sure you would like to start. Yeah, but like still our Dr. Raj, uh, Devasia is here with us along with Dr. Joseph Benavan. Is uh, it all wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are delighted to see him actually on this platform. <laughs> uh, Dr. KJ Devasia, we are most welcome to our platform. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. So we are very happy to see you through virtually. Namale COVID aye thodu ingena kaanar le bhayengar or sandosham neerite kaanam betta thodu. Ah, And college inda principal sir, college inda principala. Namale kaanu thodu ingena. Yes. And encouraging, useful. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Placid, like, uh, you know, I, I'm the principal of the college, but my dream is just to become a nurse. But my patient for towards to cardiology and cardiothoracic nursing to become a principal of this college, because the reason why is, even I'm delighted to share with you, I have been worked as a cardiac critical care nurse in KMCH hospitals in cardiothoracic ICU, <laughs> along with uh, Dr. Nandakumar team. Uh, then I am very delighted to note that you are also part of KMC team during 2004 to our five something such a time. Uh, since then, uh, I went for master's. My study, my postgraduate uh, PG dissertation was in cardiothoracic and my MPhil study was with the cardiology. And even now I am proposed, I am a PhD scholar at Amity University. My study is still with cardiology and I am like studying the cardiovascular disease by deploying the artificial intelligence in predicting the disease level for among the adolescents. So if you have a time permits, like I will take a five minutes because my Rocky Madam has, me, uh, has been encouraging me to like project the results of, when we decided to bring your session, like I thought of to make a study among our own children. Our, we have around 600 students inside the campus, all our adolescents. So I just made a little survey of putting all your discussion, uh, discussion as a question. And I made a survey, the results are awaiting. If you have a time, I would like to share with you for two minutes. And yeah. our Rocky Madam was the real instrument for this platform actually. Uh, is it okay for you? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I'm very yeah. interested to see. It will be a great uh, kind of information to our uh, managing director as well as cardiologist and as well as the director of institution. But at the same time, the survey is done on all the participants, actually. They also know it exactly, you know, what kind of results that we have been got it. Just a minute, I'll share my screen. Johnson, please make me as a host, co-host, please. Dr. Devasya, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Please continue. Yes, we will. Yes, Thank you very much for being with us. Yes. He's going to talk, correct? Right? Uh, number of students in Nadula, we conducted a survey. In fact, yeah. Professor Sentil conducted a survey. Other than the results, I'm going to share with you. 
Yeah. Ah. So, just a minute. Uh, is it visible, uh, Mr. Johnson? Yes, yes, sir. It is visible. Uh, yeah, fine, fine. Like, uh, so, like when we decided a session by Dr. Placid, I thought of to put forward a, uh, to just a few questions related to modifiable and a few non-modifiable risk factors towards to cardiac disease. Like I just framed my own terms called healthy young heart survey. The reason why is I attended Dr. Flasit's previous session also by the Lions Club or someone's session where he put the last slide. Now, every one of us have an intention to do exercise, but we are the most laziest one in taking the doing exercise into an implementation. That's the problem where we, we many of us are landing up in a heart disease or future lifestyle diseases. So I have been put forward around 27 questions toward all the other students. Uh, 569 students has been responded, of which uh, nearly um, like uh, uh, BSc nursing 190 students, paramedical students 165, BPT 161, and GNM 53 students. Totally 569 students have been responded, majority from uh, BSc nursing students. And the age is between swinging between uh, 18 to 21 years and uh, late adolescence actually. And most of them are female, actually, 90 percentage, because it's a, since a women dominant campus, only the 10 percentage of the male candidate and 90 percentage of them are female. But for height and weight, I just collected, sir, but I didn't go for a BMI calculation because I'm still planning to, to collect another 500 more samples in order to wind up this study, actually. That's why I didn't go for a calculation of uh, BMI, actually speaking. And the, among our 569 responses, uh, the 13.9 percentage of the family having a cardiovascular diseases. 29.5 percentage of the family have the hypertension. And as you mentioned, our Kerala is the capital of diabetes, whereas 35.5 percentage of our responses family had a diabetes also, either father or mother. And the family history of increased cholesterol is with 20.6 percentage. And uh, among the our respondent, 9 percentage of them are having a, a raised blood pressure and uh, around 6% of them have a raised blood sugar level and uh, only 4% of, of them having an raised blood cholesterol level and 75% uh, responded they are physically active. That is their uh, only uh, their response. 25 are uh, responded themselves, they are not physically active and uh, do uh, are they, their exercise level. That means as you know, the WHO recommendation uh, 150 minutes of uh, either a brisky walk or a jogging for a week is considered as a, uh, a physical activity. But when based on that scale, I assessed 34.6 percentage of the respondent are not physically reported as not physically active by not making a walking or exercise uh, briskly every day. And uh, as you mentioned, smoking has drastically come down. We have only 1.16 percentage of smoking habits among our adolescents. And again, the alcohol intake also, it's just a very minimal two to three percentage only among our uh, respondents. And the substance abuse is just a 0.5 percentage among all our respondents. And, uh, when we, uh, when I assess about the diet, uh, there are uh, uh, nearly 80 percentage of the respondents, our adolescents takes uh, regularly vegetables in their diet, only 20 percent they don't. But when we come back to the eating of fruits, which is giving more oxidants, like uh, 40, percentage only having the fruits. Around 60 percentage of the young adolescents are not even having a fruits on their regular diet, actually. And for, you know, it's very interesting to note that nearly 30 percentage of the adolescents are preferring to eat more fried items, which, you know, it's a very one of the bad factor for developing a later stage as a coronary artery disease. And uh, carbonated beverages often will be taken by 12.5 percentage, which is one of the, you know, high sugar level content uh, drinks, which is responsible for the sugar level also. And the fast food, that is another interesting factor. 35% of the adolescents are under, you know, eating a fast food outside. That's another important real factor among our adolescents. And 20% are just preferring extra salt in their meal. That's another important contributing factor based on your discussion. And the sleeping, which is sleeping is one of the important factor to bring down the stress level in the body. 16.4% uh, projected that they are, they don't have a sound sleep for minimum seven to eight hours. And 
spending with uh, uh, screen time uh, as per uh, the study projection as per my literature review spending more than two hours onto the mobile phone tv or computer is considered as a sedentary lifestyle but when i assessed 87 percentage are look like a sedentary but that's, this cannot be taken into account this time because online learning is going on it is inevitable to keep away our eyes onto the uh, onto the screen timing actually and uh, spending on social media, that's another important factor. You know, look at 51.5 percentage of the people, uh, means our adolescents are spending time onto the social media. This is an, another important factor which will lead to a sedentary lifestyle. And 30 uh, percentage of our adolescents are uh, reported that they are ten very tensed as according to their uh, predictions actually. So these are all the, you know, based on your discussion, I conducted a survey among our own student body, and this is a response. And I'm sure that when we talk overall, when we take the totality, every per four, four in one person is uh, projected to be a risky person to develop a heart disease, not now, maybe in future. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you very much for this simple opportunity to give in the midst of your session. And probably it will be a great uh, help of information to my management also to Dr. Flacid as a cardiologist. Thank you. Yeah, Senthil, I think this is a brilliant idea and it's an excellent uh, study which you have done among our students. I think uh, the incidence probably may be much higher if you take the general public and population. So this, this, this data itself is quite alarming because you know quite a lot of people are still following a very sedentary life, lack of exercise, high cal cal calorie and uh, salt intake. So I think uh, it is high time they work towards the modifying their lifestyle. And I'm sure that your session is a fruitful uh, motivation to the entire students who have been already attended this session. So I thought of to connect my benefit and our children's health will be protected in future. Thank you. Okay. Very well done. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, let's move on to some questions, please. Thank you, Professor Senthil, for sharing the, your uh, very valuable data with us. Dr. Benavid, would you like to add on, please? Yeah, yeah. To me, actually, the study... Sir, we are unable to hear you. Dr. I think it's a phone call or some kind of interruption. There's uh, some problem with the connectivity. Yes. Uh, oh, you're we... back, Dr. Uh, Dr. Bannon. We did not hear you. We lost you there for a, for a while. Yeah, I was saying, you know, like it's really alarming to see the incidence of diabetes, hypertension, and cholesterol among this such a young population. Uh, and what I personally feel is uh, from the management side, uh, see, we've started Zumba. We've started so much of activities where, where when we made it optional. I think once the colleges resume, we need to make it compulsory that students have to get involved in one physical activity or the other. Uh, we give them a choice of uh, physical activities and students will have to get into that um, because that's the best thing that we can do. Because And I personally would uh, request uh, Professor Senthil to see who the students are, these students who already have these diseases, that is high blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol, uh, to do proper health checkup and make sure make sure the make make sure these levels come down to normal levels uh, otherwise these students are they won't be productive later in life because what we want is when we nurture young uh, students for the future it's not just important that we do it mentally but even physically they need to be uh, they need to be fit to be productive to in their future years uh, so for me actually this uh, like uh, Dr. Placid said, it was shocking. For me also, it's a revelation because I never really thought uh, so many of our students would be falling under the risk factors that have been mentioned mm -hmm. today. The dietary though, that's something that uh, students, like very few students take fruits. Uh, see, these are things they can do, but physical activity is what I always insist on. And I think we really need to put it up. Uh, we should in include it as part of the curriculum. So students are not given any option. That's my take. That's my take on the study. Anyway, it's a well done study. It's uh, really good. It's an eye opener. It's an eye opener of sorts. And I, I'm sure this board would be the same across all the educational institutions. Because the subset of uh, students that we have 
uh, would be universal everywhere. So the younger generation really have much thinking to do and they have to act also. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, sir. That's what like, there is no point in giving a graduation, but we need to give them a productive life later stage, then only the country and the society, everything will be benefited. But I'm sure that our institution have the same morale and uh, definitely we, your advices will be looking to that once if the colleges are reopened. And the daily basis, we are encouraging our students to even to do exercise and everything, but still we don't know how far everyone is We're really taking serious. Maybe after Dr. seeing Dr. Flacid Sebastian's uh, uh, wonderful session, probably, you know, everyone will start taking initiative and going ahead with the moral of doing exercise every day. Thank you. No, like I said earlier, we need to have that skipping competition. And I want to see how many students do 100, 100 skips in a minute. So I want we will, students we, we will do the, we, we will do that, sir. Actually, we will incorporate the physical activity as one of the component into our curriculum. That will be a better idea, actually. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We should do one hour for the physical activity every day. Yes, Any questions, dear students and faculty member? Because this is a very important, interesting area. Eh? 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 Meeting. Faculty member, would you like to ask any questions? Because even I, we, we worked. I, I was worked in a cardiothoracic ICU. I have seen that the chest was broken with a saw, and will be tied up with a, with a, you know, with the sternal wires. Then I decided not to go with CABG to any cast in my lifetime, and started walking every day. Actually, yes. Yeah, thank uh, you. So are you, are you fine? Yeah. How are Hello, you? Sir. Fine, fine. Doing great, sir. Yes. And uh, happy, happy to meet you. Sir, I'm going to be very happy to meet you. But I'm going to be a student. Madam, Dr. Devasi was there. Yes. 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 I will listen to what you are talking. Doctor, I will listen to what you are talking. Exercise is very important. Yes. Exercise, and, uh, avoid smoking. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Smoking. Dr. Plasit, I have heard one of the advertisement in uh, MIMS Kannu regarding, I am not really clear about the ad actually. When I was driving, I was hearing. They introduced a new scheme for detecting a cardiovascular disease among the young chaps uh, in the recent uh, past. I don't really understand. Can, would you please explain a little bit on that? So this is probably to focus or pick up uh, coronary artery disease from youngsters. Uh, so if people above the age of 35 years, they can come to our uh, cardiology clinic. And uh, we have a set pattern of investigations for them to find out if they have any coronary artery disease. So basically, we will be looking at the biochemical parameters, blood investigations. We will do echocardiography and a treadmill test just to pick any one of them having any significant coronary artery disease, especially for the youth. So we okay. have, uh, yeah, yeah, we have given a package which is much lower rate than the other packages. So this is to encourage them to, you know, come to us, pick up any problem they have. That means kind of a primordial prevention, am I right? That's right. So just basically a screening, just a screening. screening. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. And uh, do you think that the deploying of uh, artificial intelligence is uh, in a prospective way able to detect a cardiovascular disease among the adolescents? Yeah, definitely. Because now itself, there are a lot of devices that's coming to find out the regular heart rates. You know, you can monitor your blood pressure you know, by yourself and the, the, the monitor itself will tell that your blood pressure is high or low. And it will tell your heart rate is going up, your heart rhythm is normal or abnormal. So artificial intelligence is coming in a big way uh, in cardiology and in other other cardiac other specialty also. also. So it is definitely probably you know where the, especially it is helpful in detecting arrhythmias. So most often when patients come, I had a palpitation in the middle of the night. That's the time uh, if you take an ECG at that point of time, you will be able to detect what exactly the problem. Sometimes it could be just sinus tachycardia or anxiety-related problem. Sometimes it can be a malignant arrhythmia. So if you have devices like that, you will be able to pick up such uh, you know, arrhythmia and you can actually identify what exactly the event. 
so that is it will be definitely going to help okay so the morbidities can be prevented that's right yes thank you any questions faculty member and dear students it's the session for you actually i think everyone is amazed at the information that they have uh, gathered today uh, it would take some time for them to process the whole thing uh, i'm sure one thing they would have realized is we should make sure that we eat healthy and to exercise that is definitely a too important message that they will take from here today um for for certain students please come forward with question yeah good no evening question here. is a good e good question evening. good evening sir i'm nijraj principal of tour the paramedical institution hi good evening everyone actually there is no question actually this session was interesting informative and also motivative and this session made us to know how important our heart is right when the early uh, when the introduction introduction was started with interesting and motivation speech by dr joseph benavent 40 kilometers cycling within 2 hours that is yeah that my good exercise so i uh, i think i at 55 At 55, 50, 55, yeah. Secrets yeah. coming Still. out. <laughs> But I, I'm, don't, I'm don't telling you, I, I'm presuming. I'm, I'm sure all our students were presuming that you were 45. But I'm telling you, heart wise, he is very young actually. Heart wise, yeah, he is, is very a, young. That is all. That, that is it. So, so actually, we, we actually we lack the exercise, right? Yeah. We lack we lack the exercise. Okay. So uh, my question to her uh, is that actually one of my friend. as uh, hi hypertensive he was hypertensive the last year and he uh, done the cholesterol check up also that is also margin and he consulted his doctor and doctor said uh, there is no need for the medication at that time and he can control by exercise and diet and uh, now he is uh, during this corona uh, time he is asking me Uh, he uh, he is in between uh, hypertensive only whether he how to go again to the physician and he how to start the medication actually his cholesterol is normal now so uh, uh, can he control his hypertension and this problem with his uh, dietary control and exercise yeah i have already shown you uh, one of the slides which explains Sir. that you know by doing regular exercise you can bring down your blood pressure by 20 mm of mercury of systolic mm. blood pressure so doing good exercise bringing down your weight definitely you can bring down your blood pressure as well as cholesterol also so the primary uh, or the first line of management is diet and health because i think uh, nobody should start medication straight away for any patient okay. Okay. so unless say uh, your blood pressure is extremely high like it is more than 200 which you may not be able okay. to bring down by doing exercise okay. so borderline blood pressure hypertension borderline high cholesterol should always try good exercise and uh, good diet like that is because that is long lasting and uh, that is more beneficial and uh, they will not have any problem with taking medicines and some of the side effects of the medicines also and if you do that it will also prevent you having a uh, developing a diabetes later in life so if you take uh, only medicines and do and do don't do any exercise and don't follow diet you may get other diseases like obesity you may get diabetes and other problems so if you work uh, with uh, towards uh, hypertension diabetes or high cholesterol with regular exercise and diet it can prevent other diseases also coming uh, in yeah. your life you know that is how it is so it is very important if you as long as your blood pressure and cholesterol levels are normal you don't have to take medicines Thank you, sir. Thank you. We don't have to take. There are some questions being posted in the chat. Could somebody read it? Uh, Mr. Johnson, Anju, please coordinate. Uh, one of the staff has the question about this one. I have been diagnosed with the coronary artery disease, and should I go with only the medic uh, medicine, or can I do the exercise also? and if i started doing the exercise i started breathless and uh, become uh, fatigue so what would be the remedies he uh, basically 
the diagnosis is that the person is having a coronary artery disease. So you need to know what is the extent of the coronary artery disease you are uh, having and uh, what is the significance of the coronary artery disease before starting an exercise program. So we usually when patients come to us with coronary artery disease, we will restructify the patient to see what is the severity of the coronary artery disease. So there are many ways you can do that. One is doing an echocardiography. Second is doing a treadmill test. By doing an echocardiography, you will know that what is your cardiac pumping or function. And suppose if your cardiac pumping is very low, you shouldn't uh, engage yourself with heavy exercise. And if you do treadmill test, and if your cardiac pumping is normal, and if you do treadmill test, and if you can walk, uh, uh, you know, nine meters or ten meters, you can usually do exercise, you know, walking three kilometers or four kilometers. So if you having a coronary artery disease, it is better to avoid competitive sports. And what we usually recommend or suggest our patients, you have a graded exercise pattern. That is, you walk a half kilometers first week. Then if you don't have any symptoms or problem, you can increase that to one kilometer next week. And every week you can keep on increasing half kilometers and you walk three kilometers per day. That is what is recommended. So if you have a heart disease, first you need to see a cardiologist and find out what is the extent of your problem. Then based on his recommendation, you take up your exercise program. So better avoid competitive uh, uh, sports. Thank you, sir. And we have, we have one more question in the chat box. That is, how can we assess whether we are more prone for cardiac disease? Is there any calculation other than uh, calculating the BMI? Yeah, I've already uh, shown you uh, in one of my slides that uh, you can predict your chance of having coronary artery disease in next 10 years. So that is based on your age, sex, your, whether you have diabetes, hypertension, your body weight. So if you put that into that calculator, that is freely available in the net. So you can download that calculator and put your risk factors into that, your age, gender, all that. They will predict, they will give and calculate and tell this, this, your 10 years, within 10 years, your chance of having a coronary event is 5%, 10%, 20%. 20%. So you can definitely predict of having a heart disease in 10 years time by using this calculator. So based on this calculator, we will restratify the patient. Suppose somebody has a, an, a risk of having coronary artery disease uh, more than 20% in 10 years time, that particular person, even if they have a borderline uh, uh, cholesterol, you should take a cholesterol lowering drug. So people who are more at risk of having coronary artery disease in 20 years time, they should be very careful about their diet, exercise. They should do a basic workup, like, you know, do blood sugar, cholesterol, hyper blood pressure man uh, checking, all that. And it is very important that they keep all these parameters at the optimum level. I hope you have seen that uh, uh, slide that showing that how to predict uh, you know, coronary artery disease. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. On, online also, there are many tools available. When we feed all our data, that will give you a, exactly a prediction of our risk for becoming a coronary artery disease. Also, I posted a survey, you know, when you answer that survey, you make your own calculation, you will come to know where you are standing exactly. And mm -hmm. that is what I'm also working on to make a predictions for the young people's uh, risk for coronary artery disease in yeah. future. This is a, you know, nobody is bothering at this age when they would develop a disease only, they will become a botheration. That's become a secondary prevention. Prevention, But secondary prevention is really speaking a cost-effective one. But now we are looking for a very right. cost-effective method to bring down the uh, mortality and the morbidity of the coronary artery disease. Yeah, I think you can in incorporate in your study this risk predictor calculation also. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. I was about to say that. At least we could do it on our students to see what their risk element is. I have an individual data also, sir. Definitely we can able to screen out how many are really risk for, after completing making a survey, once finished, we were, would able to give you how many lower the education academy students are under risk for coronary artery disease. I'm sure that I can able to give you a data. I think Professor Sintil, you can also do a study on staff in yeah. load hospital and other 
you know college you know they they you there you get better result also you know all the staff you know in yeah, our I'm, yes sir when i was uh, guiding for one of the post graduation study i conducted a prediction of coronary artery disease among the it professionals actually because they are the major risk category people than other yeah. people also but in this hearing your session i am sure that the healthcare professional especially they are also under more risk though yeah. we have awareness but we are not looking after our health actually that is yeah. true and i am sure that definitely that study also will be taken up yeah you can include doctors also in that yeah definitely sir excuse me sir good afternoon i am nimmi agustin from lod college of nursing sir i would like to see clarifications uh, regarding two matters one was regarding my neighbor who was diagnosed due to have hypertension just two weeks before before that she actually she as per her report she had uh, hypotension but one fine day she had you know severe headache especially in the occipital region and she said like she was uh, shivering she was sweating kind of difficulties she had and when the bp was checked it was 220 190 uh, but soon she was taken to hospital and uh, she was given some injections and later on her bp is regularly checked and now she is like she has uh, her bp has come down to 130 uh, 90 150 110 you know but still there is variation and she is on medication now but as per her report she was advised by some of her, some of her friends that drinking beetroot juice early in the morning that means in the empty stomach will reduce bp in fact she asked a clarification from me but i was not able to give her a correct answer i i would uh, like to get an answer from you sir yeah uh, i don't think any particular benefit of uh, drinking beetroot juice but uh, if you incorporate a lot of fruits and juice into your diet you know it can reduce your uh, high rich uh, di- cholesterol diet to a basic sugar and uh, i mean basic fruits and vegetables that definitely will bring down your blood pressure second thing is okay. more, more important is uh, limit your salt intake per day okay and good okay, exercise sir. all these things will bring down i mean just just because drinking beetroot may not bring down the blood pressure but okay okay sir if you are incorporating a lot of fruits and uh, you know vegetables in your food habits i think definitely that is going to help okay okay sir and another thing is uh, she is actually uh, taking on medication for thyroid hypothyroidism and also for cholesterol there is a, is there a relation between the increase in the level of cholesterol with the thyroid sir no it is the other way around if you have a hypothyroidism your chances of having high cholesterol level and having high blood pressure is very high so okay. probably uh, hypothyroidism is the culprit there uh, hypothyroid people we see high blood pressure and high cholesterol okay okay sir thank you sir another thing that i have to see clarification is about one of my friend who is an it professional she was quite all right but since it is since this lockdown period started she had to as everyone she she had to start working online she is about 34 35 years old and her mother is hypertensive and uh, recently when she uh, checked her cholesterol level it is found to be high especially ldl and uh, because of this corona pandemic you know every as everyone is afraid to go to doctor i mean to hospitals she is at present in a confusion uh, like and was asking me regarding the you know pattern of treatment that she has to opt or she has to just do the exercises can you please advise on this also sir see it's all depends upon what exactly her ldl cholesterol level is suppose her ldl cholesterol level is uh, you know usually we want to keep the ldl cholesterol level less than 100 for a normal person without any other okay. factors so if her cholesterol level is suppose we say uh, 130 or 160 she can follow exercise and diet so that okay, it will sir. come down near 100 Okay, okay suppose her cholesterol level is more than 190 even if she does good exercise and diet it's maximum it will come down to 160 or 150 so still okay. she is very much high above the normal level so somebody who has a cholesterol level more than 190 ldl level more than mm-hmm. 190 definitely should take tablets for uh, cholesterol cholesterol but somebody who has a borderline cholesterol elevated ldl level they should try to bring down their cholesterol by uh, exercise and diet 
Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. There is some one uh, chat box question, sir, uh, by Mr. Lejo. Or uh, like pure mm -hmm. coconut oil, homemade, or the sunflower oil available in market, which is the good for heart? Uh, both oils are not good for heart. See, any oil you know, uh, which contains saturated fat, uh, fatty acids in some extent is not good for heart. So if you, the, usually what the recommendation is, if you are using uh, uh, oil, you use very little amount of oil. And I told you already, you don't overcook your oil, don't, no deep fries, and don't reuse the cooked oil. That is the primary important thing. Then only comes whether it is a coconut oil or sunflower oil. So if you analyze the biochemistry of uh, coconut oil and the uh, sunflower oil, definitely coconut oil has more saturated fats. So if you use coconut oil, 5 ml, and if you use, or if you other side you are using 5 ml of sunflower oil, definitely sunflower oil is superior or better for heart when compared to pure coconut oil. But I, I, when he says homemade pure coconut oil, I don't know how much the, you know, uh, oils, what we, sunflower oil, which you get from the shops are adulterated. But uh, if I'm taking same proportion of uh, coconut oil and same of uh, sunflower oil, if you take both and if you do same temperature cooking, definitely sunflower oil is better than coconut oil. <coughs> One more question from uh, my answer again, because nobody is raising any questions. Uh, recent past, uh, I have heard like many of the young chaps who is doing a shuttle car play, you know, the, uh, as a cardiologist, uh, what's your uh, predictions about this? Yeah, I think the, I've heard a lot of these uh, questions and I've answered the answers also. It's easy for me to answer this question. So there is nothing to do with uh, sudden cardiac death and shuttle gate. Shuttle is a wonderful game and uh, I love shuttle. So the thing is what happens is in most of the cases, if you look at, uh, you know, across the spectrum of these competitive sports, a lot of people have sudden cardiac death during active uh, sudden exercises, like so rapid exercises. So what is recommended is if you are crossing uh, 40 years and if you want to get into some kind of a sport, you have to prepare yourself very well. You need to do very good warm-up exercise. You have to train yourself well before getting into any kind of uh, sport. That is the most important thing. Even if you have a break for some time, if you, suppose you have not played for one month, when you get back to your game, then you should have a proper warm-up uh, before you start your game. So I feel more, as, especially it happens in shuttle, you know, you suddenly jump into the court one day and started playing. And because of the momentum and the, you know, the, yeah, uh, everybody encourage you to play more and more games. You tend to play more, so that is the time you have problems. So it seems with the same with I always tell you know my patients don't get into this varamelli which we do for our onam. It is not good for heart at all. So any this kind of exercise like uh, varamelli, uh, shuttle, uh, any other competitive sports which you do heavy weightlifting, it's not good for heart after the age of forty. So. If you, are, if you want to go for competitive sports after 48, 40 years of age, you have to train yourself very well before getting into that. So I feel the sudden cardiac death during shuttle happens mainly because of uh, lack of proper training, lack of uh, proper you know, warm-up before getting onto the court. That's what I feel. It is nothing to do with shuttle alone. Uh, can we prevent or uh, can we prevent those sudden cardiac arrest? Or oh, what are the prevention or if, uh, if you are getting any symptoms or signs before when we are uh, coming across this cardiac arrest? Okay, uh, so how to prevent or recognize, uh, you know, early warning signs of uh, sudden cardiac death? So sudden cardiac death uh, is a big you know, division of cardiology itself. You know, it happens in even youngsters also. You know, you, you must have heard a lot of times in the newspaper, this is what exactly is sudden cardiac death. So what happens is some people will have structural heart disease problem like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Some people will have coronary artery disease. Some people will have high blood pressure. All these things can cause sudden cardiac death. So I think what is more most important is to have a proper checkup. See how old your heart is, how good at, uh, how, how is your blood pressure level, 
before getting into any of this, uh, you know, sports. And second thing is uh, sudden graying. When you do exertion, when you do heavy work, you feel giddy, uh, giddiness, palpitation. These are the early warning signs of having a sudden cardiac death. So people who experience any of these symptoms should consult a cardiologist and get them properly checked before uh, continuing their uh, sports event. That's what I feel. Thank you, sir. Uh, any more questions? Uh, already the time is up now because uh, it is very interesting. That's why like the time is flying like anything. We are nearly going to be approached two hours now. Any more questions or shall we wind up? Anju, please proceed. Okay. We are extremely grateful to you, sir, for the fantastic session. I hope the participants also found it significant and interesting. A grateful heart is the magnet for miracles and thankfulness is the quickest path to joy. It's my great pleasure to welcome our Lourdes Education Academy Director, Mrs. Raki Joseph, to deliver the thanking note. Ma'am, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it has been a wonderful session, a truly enlightening session. Uh, and for that, uh, we are greatly indebted to you, Dr. Placid Sebastian. Thank you so much uh, for such an informative session, like I said earlier. Um, all your slides were extremely, extremely uh, informative. Um, and all the little anecdotes that you used were very attractive as well. Uh, I'm, I'm for sure going to remember we each day dig our grave with our teeth. And in my case, it is a very, very true example. And for all of us, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure you include in that irated drinks like Coca-Cola and Sprite. And I'm unfortunately guilty of that today. Sorry about that. This is now going straight into the bin, I promise you. Okay, there you go. It's gone to the bin. Thank you, madam, so. <laughs> for making a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I am setting an example today and anybody in the campus can come and check. My sprite is inside the bin. So, thank you once again, Dr. Placid. It's been so enlightening. Thank you ever so much for your time as well. Uh, I know and we strongly believe that two hours from your daily schedule is a very, very important time. And thank you very much for sharing it with us. Um, our managing director, Dr. Joseph Benevin, who's always been such a motivation. Thank you, sir, for honoring this uh, request from us and uh, making sure that our session happens. And we are overly delighted. Can we have a little more glance of Dr. Devasya? Sir, thank you so much, Dr. Devasya, today for being with us. Uh, sessions and I think today's session is the most, most delightful one um, because of your honorable presence. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shall we conclude the session then, please? Or anybody would like to say the last words? Dr. Menevin? It's good. See, what's important is what's the takeaway from this? The takeaway message and how it's going to influence each one of you. Like, I hope your sprite doesn't come back onto your table once the session's over. No? It's gone for life, I hope. It's the way it's got to be. Uh, and I and I hope everyone takes the message and you know live a healthy lifestyle so that we can be more productive as we more than being productive. See, we be productive for some time, but what's important is that we don't become a burden uh, towards old age with all these diseases. So let's all stay healthy and let's stay fit as long as we live. Thank you. It was a very good session. Uh, Shaiju. Thank you. Good, good, very well done. Chris, Thank and to the point. Thank you for organizing like this. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, sir. To a healthy Lourdes Education Academy and to a healthy Lourdes family. Thank you very much uh, for being with us today. And to all the students, have a lovely day. And thank you so much, Dignitary. Thank you. We declare the session is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Once again, thanking you all. Hope all of you had a nurturing experience. Thanks and regards from Louth College of Nursing. Thank you all. <laughs>